Assalamu alaikum, everyone. This is uh, Shariq Arfan, your brother from uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I would like to, um, you know, officially welcome you to the ICNA National Symposium. The theme for today is, uh, indeed, I am near. Um, so uh, that is the theme, and inshallah, we're going to have uh, a packed seminar. Um, so the first speaker I have is uh, Dr. Madiha Tessin. Uh, Dr. Madhya Tessin is a research fellow and a community educator at the Family and Youth Institute. And uh, her research is uh, primarily focusing on what helps Muslim youth th thrive in the current sociopolitical environment, focusing on discrimination, identity development, and parenting. Her topic would be an ideal day, how to keep calm at home. So uh, please, Dr. Madhya Tessin. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe um, and happy and healthy in their homes, inshallah. Um, so I'm supposed to talk about an ideal day. Um, many of us probably can't even think about or imagine what that ideal day will look like, right? Some of us are overwhelmed, and that's an understatement. Um, you know, some of us have gotten right down to business, made plans, executed them, posted them on social media for everybody to see and are doing great, right? Or so it seems. Um, others are paralyzed by by our fear or an anxiety, um, really unable to do much other than check news um, and then we check them again. Uh, then other people kind of fall in between. So when you think about an ideal day for all these different kinds of scenarios, there's one thing that I want you to walk away from, inshallah, and that is that there is no one blueprint that works for everyone right? Everybody's situation is different. And so you have to find a plan that works for everyone differently. Um, one of the things that I do at the FYI is we try to come up with solutions that are based in research that you can apply. So I'll show you guys the toolkit um, that I'll kind of highlight some solutions from today, inshallah, but then you can refer to that toolkit for lots more examples and practical solutions that you can apply in your life based on your scenario and your situation. So before we kind of go into what this blueprint sort of looks like, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, before you can think about that blueprint, this is really the time to reflect inward, right? You have to turn yourself away from looking at everyone else and everybody else to inward, right? Before all of this stuff happened, when you had an argument with an, a loved one or you were stressed out about something or something was bothering you, you were able to go somewhere, right? You could go to your to the masjid or you could go to work or you could go to the gym. You could do something to get that stress out. Right now when you have an argument or something is stressing out, where are you gonna go, right? There's only so many rooms in your house. Um, there's only so many different ways that you can virtually connect with people. What are you gonna do? You're faced with yourself. So this is that time that you have to face yourself and look at who you are and what will help you. So before you can have that calm day, you must acknowledge the storm, right? The calm that comes before the storm. Acknowledge what you're feeling inside. Acknowledge what your family is feeling inside. It is okay to accept that this is very, very stressful, that we are going through a form of grief, right? Work through those big feelings, those anxious feelings that you're feeling, process them so that you can accept them. Because if you don't, then you dump them on your surroundings, right? They come out around you. What, what does this mean? How many of us are feeling more short-tempered -temper with each other, right? How many of us are much more cranky and irritable, right? We are feeling like it's just a totally different situation and we can't get along as well as we used to. What's going on? What's going on is you're taking those feelings that you have not processed and you have not accepted and you've dumped them into your relationships around you. So instead, you have to name them, right? Find ways to express them. Whatever works for you, figure that out for those anxious feelings. Um, I'll show you the toolkit, inshallah, that we have that you that will help you do that. The second part to that is really just if you have children and, and you know, those of you that are families that are listening, you have to process these feelings together as a family. By doing that, you're really showing your kids that it's okay to have negative feelings and how to work through them right? How to have raw emotions and process them without judging each other. The second part to turning inward, right, is having that self-awareness. Who am I for real? Me as a person, me going through this, who am I and what, what is helpful to me, right? Face yourself so then you can thrive and grow. You're hearing so many webinars, you're hearing so many talks, right, that are giving you all these suggestions about what to do, what works, what doesn't work, right? 
but none of that matters until you turn inward. So what do I mean? <coughs> I kind of want to give an example. I hope, I hope this works out, inshallah, right? So this apple core is you, right? This is the core of who you are and the core of your being, your personality, your history, your family, how they raised you, everything. This is who you are, okay? Listening to different webinars, listening to different activities, you think, you know, this is going to work. This plan on playing with your kids and having these great, you know, um, arts and crafts activities and STEM activities is going to help you out. It's going to make your kids thrive. You also think that this, and this is where I was worried this might not work, but inshallah here, <laughs> this part of you is the gym workout routine that you think you're going to be able to do, right? Um, my lovely husband, may Allah bless him, got us bikes because he thought that going biking will be great for us. We've never been biking before as a family, okay? But it's a plan that he thinks will help us. This is another part, you know, another advice that you might have seen in a webinar that you think is going to work for you, and so on. So you keep going and you keep going and you keep applying these parts um, to your life and your day, ideal day, and you think that's what's going to help you, right? But what are you noticing? That as you're applying all these expectancies and these pressures from what you're seeing around you, what's getting lost in the process, right? The core, who you are. You think all these different scenarios, all these different strategies and examples and in the webinars is going to help, be helpful to you. But what's getting lost is who you are. So you have to peel away these expect, expect, uh, expectations that you see from strategies around you. You have to peel away the plans that might work for other people but don't work for your family, for your home environment, for the culture that's in your household, right? You have to peel that all away. Take away all those expectations so you get back to your core and who you are. Take those pressures away. That is the very, very first step before you can come up with any kind of sense of what's my ideal way, an ideal day to stay calm at home. Okay, this is that time to really diligently um, and almost selfishly really work on the relationship that you have with yourself. Many of us have different buckets that we have to fill. So inshallah, the next, the rest of the talk, I'll, I'll kind of focus on what are those buckets, right? That we can fill to get back to this core of who we are so we can thrive. Before I talk about some specific strategies, I just wanted to show you guys um, where you guys can go for getting a lot more information and, and how to kind of calm the anxiety down, how to recognize that storm that's inside of you and around you and some techniques to work on that. So I'll just show you that really sort of quickly. This is a toolkit that we created for sort of how to thrive um, in the time of coronavirus. So I encourage everybody to check it out. It's on the FYI.org. It's a well-being toolkit. It has, as you can see, lots of different activities um, and lots of different topics for, for everybody, whether you are a young person, whether you're a family, if you're looking for how to survive on working from home, if you're looking for how to be a student and survive during this time and thrive during this time, right? If you're parents and you're trying to come up with resources for your children, it's all here at, at your fingertips, inshallah. So please check that out for a lot more information in how to really deal with that anxiety and, and to stay calm. So how do we fill those buckets, right? So we've kind of talked about self-awareness, right? We've talked about reflecting inward. So once you've peeled it away and gotten back to this core of who you are, how can we focus and what plan can we create to have that ideal day, right? The one thing I want you to keep in mind as you're thinking about this core of who you are, right, is inshallah, inshallah, all of us will get out of this, right? This time will pass and we will survive, inshallah. But what version of you is going to survive? How you feel inside and how, if you have children, your children feel those emotions, that's the la long lasting impact of what's going to remain after all of this passes, right? So, what generation are we going to find? And that's what I want you to keep in mind when you're thinking about coming up with some kind of plan that helps you. That, that's what you want to nurture and, and, and make and feed into that, inshallah. So what are some things that you can do? Some, self, some quick self-care activities really is, you know, take breaks from media, right? As much as you want to check and then recheck the news, really step away from it. 
nothing's if something changes you'll find out it'll still be there for you when you need to find you know look into it um i can't tell you how many times updates have come from our governor and my whatsapp messages have built blown up from so many different groups and i can feel like just my chest getting so tight because of the pressure of that constant constant barrage of information so step away from it Social media can be a great thing, but use it to connect with others, not just to scroll through endless feeds, right? Which really impacts those pressures, again, that I was talking about and the expectations that we put on ourselves. So use social media to connect, inshallah. Take care of your physical body, right? Move as much as you can. A lot of us, you know, if we have the privilege of being able to work from home, we're in front of the screen all the time. So give your eyes that break, move away from it. Get ready in the morning as if you're going to work, right? We've all seen those memes about, um, you know, people doing Zoom conferences where they don't, you know, have pants on or, you know, and just have like a, a dress shirt on at the top and nothing else and, and just regular PJs. Don't be in your PJs all day, right? Give that chance to really invigorate yourself um, just physically take care of your physical space so that means making zones in your home that are for different areas right so don't work don't sleep and relax all in the same place have a work zone have a school zone and an area where really you can just relax that's really key as well um and then the last part of all this is to connect as much as possible right even the most diehard introvert needs connection um, and social isolation still has an impact on, 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 on those kinds of people. So you have to use this time to really use technology, but also just find new ways to create that community for yourself. We have gotten, especially with Ramadan coming up, you know, we've gotten so used to connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our community, right? Our spiritual muscles got stronger that way. Well, now we're going to be exercising our spiritual muscles in different ways. And so you have to reframe this for yourself and your family as how do I connect and how do I build this spiritual muscle um, now that I don't have this in-person community that I'm so used to. And you have to find a way to do that. Um, we can lean on our in our sira to find lots of ways. And you'll hear hear that, I'm sure, from lots of other speakers of prophetic examples of how spirituality was obtained and these muscles were exercised in isolation, right? How, this is our chance to, this is Allah giving us that chance to really experience worshiping him, but not with that community that we were used to. So it's our chance to really change the narrative and create new traditions. If you go back to the FYI.org, we have a Ramadan toolkit. And in there, there is a whole article about how to create these new family traditions and, and really emphasize that in a family Ramadan environment in the home. Other things that you can think about in terms of creative ways to connect with the community from home, right? Find ways to connect spiritually, but in different ways, right? You can have vicar sessions, find ways to have, um, to emulate sort of the isolation of the Prophet ﷺ, right? Create a cave or tent or corner in the home for dhikr. Make a part of your home a masjid as well, right? Or go outside to change the scenery and just connect with Allah in a different way. And all of these things create these memories and these positive feelings for children, which is what's long lasting for them when we all sort of get out of, get out of this, inshallah. And then the last part to sort of connection is some of us really do need that connection with community, right? Part of our, for, for those kinds of people, especially with Ramadan coming up, community serves a really, really important part of building those spiritual muscles. For for those people, social ibadah sort of alone is not the only thing that's important. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, for for that, it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to feel like I still need my community in Ramadan, right? Um, there are a lot of webinars, alhamdulillah, that are helpful with that, but you have to take those webinars and you have to take those advices and, and strategies and make them apply to you. For example, you could come up with, um, you know, virtual get togethers, have a Zoom iftar with different families as your way of sort of connecting to people. Push yourself to really make an effort to create this new community that makes sense to you. And it's not just listening to halakas, it's other ways to connect with people, right? Connect with your friends during Ramadan on a daily basis. Have, make, make up challenges, right? Things like that, that really connect you and help you build your Iman in ways that you're used to outside of Ramadan, right? But you have to make it meet your reality and what builds up that same core that who is who you are. And the last thing that I really just wanted to leave you with is I want you to think about 
who are you and who is your family when you come out of this? That's that target that you want to keep in mind. Inshallah, inshallah, we all come out healthy um, physically, but are we going to come out of it spiritually and emotionally healthy, right? Are we going to see a generation of highly anxious individuals when we come out of this on the other side? Or are we going to reframe this and try to see it as a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's opened our eyes to sort of the blessings that we used to take for granted? And so how do we reframe them? Um, inshallah during this time that we're facing the final thing i just wanted to acknowledge is some of us might not be able to handle it right we might need professional help so it's really important for those of you that are in that situation please seek professional help um you know in your circles um wherever you're able to reach out to some of us are also in unsafe homes and it's unfortunate but it is in our community and so we need to acknowledge that and recognize that so please also seek help and reach out to different organizations um, that can help you in that situation so finally as i said let's get back to this core right let's take away all the pressures and expectations with a million different lists of what to do and what was what's helpful and what webinars to listen to and focus on what can i do to get back to this core of who i am so i can thrive thrive inshallah um on the other side of this jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum Alaikum salam. Jazakallah khair, sister, um, Dr. Madia Tehseen, uh, for the beautiful reminders. And I think it's befitting that we start, um, you know, this this uh, this symposium with focusing on our personal uh, mental health. So that I'd like to remind before I sign off and hand over is, um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, uh, that even though the convention that we all miss and love um, is not able to go on, um, you know, the, this work never stops. That's that's what I wanted to kind of emphasize on that. Alhamdulillah, we have the symposium. Um, we have different departments and wings of ICNA uh, proactively out there on the front lines taking care of the community in need. So I would uh, really encourage and urge all of you to take some time and donate um, at uh, www.ikna.org forward slash donate. So Jazakallah khair for your time.